How do you receive the Holy Spirit? And how do you know you have the Holy Spirit? These are questions that I get asked sometimes during my live streams, and I'm going to be answering them in this video by giving you four steps on how to receive the Holy Spirit and how to recognize you have the Holy Spirit. Before I do that though, make sure and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Step number one, ask for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in Luke chapter 11 verse 13, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Even in our sinful and fallen state, we love our children and want to give them things which we think are good for them. God loves us as well, even more than we love our children. He is our Heavenly Father, and He wants to give us good things like we want to give our children good things. One of those good things is the Holy Spirit, and we are promised that if we ask for the Holy Spirit, we will receive it. Step number two, repent from your sins. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. To repent basically means to turn from your life of sin and turn to God. A good example of this is Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11. It says, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Step number three, get baptized. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, which I just read in the last step, tells us not only to repent, but also get baptized if we want to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Bible, there are cases of people receiving the Holy Spirit before getting baptized and even long after getting baptized, so that's possible too. For example, Acts chapter 10 verses 44 through 48 talks about a Roman centurion called Cornelius and his servants who heard the gospel being preached by Peter and then they received the Holy Spirit. Afterwards, Peter instructed them to get baptized. And Jesus' apostles didn't receive the Spirit until after Jesus was resurrected. John chapter 20 verses 21 through 22 says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, he received the Holy Spirit at his baptism. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 tells us, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. I think that's probably the case for most people. They get the Holy Spirit once they get baptized. But anyway, all of these people mentioned in the Bible who received the Holy Spirit got baptized sooner or later. And I think that's the most important thing. They had the intention of obeying God's Word and getting baptized. And why do some people get the Holy Spirit before getting baptized and some after? It may be that those who get the Holy Spirit beforehand have already made a complete surrender to God and their circumstances don't allow them to get baptized just yet so God gives them the Holy Spirit anyway. Then, later on, when their circumstances change, they can get baptized, and vice versa. Some may have gotten baptized, but have not yet made a complete surrender to God, so He doesn't give them the Holy Spirit until they're ready for it. I'm sure there are also cases of people who receive the Spirit who never got baptized as well. For example, say you become a Christian in a prison, which doesn't allow you to get baptized and you get old and die there or something. I think God takes that into consideration and will give you His Holy Spirit. But if you have the chance to get baptized and you refuse to get baptized, I doubt that God will give you His Spirit, simply because that's one of the requirements. Step number four, be willing to obey God. Acts chapter five verse 32 says, and we are His witnesses of these things. And so was also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey Him. This kind of goes hand in hand with repentance because when you repent, you decide to obey God. But it doesn't stop there because at any time, if you decide that you don't want to obey God, you can lose the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 tells us to grieve not 
the Spirit of God. That basically means to sadden him away. The Holy Spirit is a divine person, albeit invisible, and he has feelings. When we sin, we cause the Holy Spirit sorrow, and he will not continue to abide with us if we go back to living a life of sin. One of the reasons the Holy Spirit is given to us is to empower us to live victoriously over sin. For example, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 tells us, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When we decide we no longer want to serve the Lord and we go back to a life of sin, the Holy Spirit is withdrawn from us because God does not force Himself on us. He respects our decision. King David was afraid that he would lose the Holy Spirit as a result of committing adultery with Bathsheba and having her husband killed. In Psalm chapter 51 verse 11 he wrote, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Fortunately, King David repented and was forgiven by God, not without consequences though, but that's another subject. And King Saul, the first king of Israel, had the Holy Spirit taken away from him for his persistent disobedience against God. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Moreover, when the Lord was talking to King David about his son Solomon, who was to rule Israel as a future king, the Lord told David, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. What God was really telling David is that the Holy Spirit had been taken away from Saul. And as a result, Saul lost his connection with God because Saul persistently disobeyed God. I think it's different if somebody is struggling with some temptation or sin and they're pleading with God to gain the victory. If that's the case with you, God will have mercy on you and will do everything He can to help you and will grant you His Spirit to give you power to overcome. But if you turn back from God to live a life of intentional sin, you basically reject His Spirit and His grace, so He gives you what you want. Now, after you receive the Holy Spirit, how do you know you have the Holy Spirit? Do you lose control of yourself and fall to the ground and start shaking uncontrollably while babbling in tongues or something like that? Some people think so. And I know people that have had experience that. I've seen that happen with my own eyes. However, the problem with that is it's not biblical. As a matter of fact, it's a demonic counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to help us gain control of our lives, not to cause us to lose control of ourselves. And babbling in tongues is confusing because no one understands it. But the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion, so it is not of God. There is a true gift of tongues, but the modern day babbling form is not it. By the way, I have a video that goes more into detail about the gift of tongues called 10 Shocking Facts About Speaking in Tongues. I'll leave a link to it in the card on the upper right hand corner of the screen which you can click on to watch. What's more, the Bible says Jesus was full of the Spirit, but He never babbled in tongues or rolled around on the ground. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And what was the result of Jesus being full of the Spirit? Among other things, he was obedient to the Father. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. So, if someone receives the Holy Spirit, it will change that person's desires so that they will want to obey God and it will empower them to be obedient. We can read more about the change that takes place in a believer's life once they receive the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, just to clarify, that doesn't mean that those who receive the Holy Spirit don't have to obey God. It just means that there is no law against love, joy, peace, and so on because the law doesn't condemn that which is good. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. This just confirms that those who receive the Spirit will obey God. The word flesh here refers to our sinful nature. 
If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. If this describes you, that means you have received the Holy Spirit. There are certain requirements necessary for receiving the Holy Spirit. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you need to ask for it, repent from your known sins, and get baptized. And it is possible to lose the Holy Spirit if you return to a life of sin. Babbling in tongues and losing control of yourself and falling to the ground is not a sign that you have received the Holy Spirit, nor is it a requirement to receive the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is a sign that you have received the Holy Spirit, and it says nothing about rolling around on the ground or speaking in tongues. Thanks for watching. Check out my Bible t-shirt. I'll leave a link to it on the screen and in the description box. It's available in various styles, sizes, and colors. It can be a good conversation starter to help you share your faith, and proceeds from your purchase help keep my channel going. Also, I'm offering free shipping on all orders within the United States until Christmas. If this video has blessed you, feel free to like it and share it, and check out some more of my videos by clicking on the screen. I have a lot of good Christian videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. God bless you.